So what are we talking about here? Well, you can see I have a bunch of uh, little problems and all of them involve a negative exponent, okay? Negative powers, negative exponents. So we wanna get this right because this does confuse a lot of students. So I'm gonna cover not only these uh, problems, I'm gonna do a few extra problems. Just a quick review on how to deal with negative exponents because they are everywhere in algebra. And if you don't know how to do them, you're gonna have a tough time passing your algebra course, okay? All right, so this is, uh, again, kind of confusing for a lot of students and uh, understandably so the rule is a little bit confusing and depending on how you're taught this you know you could be making some mistakes or you're like mm, I still or struggling just stick with me for a couple minutes I'm going to show you how an easy way to think about how to work with negative exponents but uh, before we get started let me quickly introduce myself my name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades and if you need help learning math well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now, if you wanna go ahead and try these problems, I would say this would be a good little pop quiz for you. So we're gonna do um, not only these problems, I'm gonna do a few more um, practice just so we can get this rule down, how to deal with negative exponents. So let's get to it. And this is the property, okay? So you have a to the uh, negative n is equal to one over a to the n. This is what you learn in an algebra course. So what we're talking about is properties of exponents. So this is one of them. Uh, other examples would be like, hey, when you're multiplying uh, powers, okay? So this falls again under the chapter or unit or section you might be studying in your math course on the uh, properties of powers and, uh, and exponents. So this would be another uh, particular one that you would uh, want to learn. So when you're multiplying powers, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So that rule would be a to the n plus m. Now, with the properties of exponents, okay, powers and exponents, this is one of them. And this is the one that deals with negative exponents. So if you want to learn the others, uh, you want to review all of this stuff, which obviously you do if you're studying this, a couple of suggestions. One, I have um, additional videos in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel you might want to check out, or you might just want to sign up for my algebra uh, course, algebra two course, whatever the case is, I have, I have them all. Okay, so Let's talk about the rule. This is the property. So a to the negative n is equal to one over a, a to the n. They're like, mm, okay, that makes pretty, you know, it's pretty uh, straightforward, but now let's apply that. So if I have two to the negative third power, that's equal to, now if you look at just the pattern, it looks like we put a one and then we write the same thing. Here's a to the negative n. This is a to the positive n. So uh, it, the answer would be two, cubed okay so you can see just follow the pattern here two uh, to the negative third is equal to one over uh, two to the third okay now what's interesting is if I was uh, to give you uh, this one over two cubed could you you know uh, interpret this rule backwards okay most of us are looking at this rule going this way let me just kind of erase this you're thinking about like going from here to here Okay, but you can go from here to here, right? So one over two cubed, you're like, oh, this looks like it would be two to the negative third power. And you got to interpret this rule in both ways. All right, that's why this particular property of exponents is a little confusing uh, for students. Okay, so if we understand this, that's our first example. Let's practice this a little bit more because I'm going to give you a uh, little bit easier way to kind of think about this. All right, so here are uh, some more problems. We've got some other ones I'm going to do here. If you want to go ahead and try to do these problems on your own, go ahead and do so. So a to the negative 1, what is that equal to? Again, when you're dealing with properties of exponents, you need to um, typically you don't want to leave your answer with negative exponents. Okay, so we want to simplify. So a to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over a to the first, okay, or just 1 over a. Again, our uh, property is a to negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n, okay? All right, so pretty straightforward stuff. Let's move on here. So we have x uh, plus y to the negative 2 power. So you're like, ooh, wait, what's going on here? Do I, you know, distribute this negative 2 in? No, what you need to recognize 
is that this a, uh, x plus y is the base, okay? It's this whole, let's it's, uh, make sure you understand this. x plus y is the base, so that's like uh, a, this is like our a to the n, okay? So if that's the case, what are we gonna do? Whatever is down here, okay, if it's an a, this could be an expression like this, just take this thing and you know, you're gonna move it down here, right? a to the negative uh, n, okay, this was our uh, property, this would be at x plus y down here to the n. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me go ahead and just show you the answer. So first things first, recognize that this is, you're going to treat this as the base, a. So this is going to be equal to 1 over x plus y squared, okay? So again, you can kind of study that pattern. So what happens is, when we have x plus y to negative 2, we're going to put it this down in the denominator. I want you to start thinking of these things as fractions. So x plus y to negative 2 over 1. Now, if I take this whole thing and I kind of plop it down in to the opposite side of the fraction bar, up here it's in the numerator. If I put this down in the denominator, what happens to the exponents? This negative becomes positive. That I want you to keep that in mind because this is the way I want you to kind of remember how to work with negative exponents. So let's go on and look at some more examples. Okay, so again, we still have our property a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So I have 1 over t to the negative square. So what is the answer here? Okay, you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. I was kind of thinking t to the negative uh, squared is equal to 1 over t t squared, but that's not the problem. It's 1 over t to the negative uh, 2 power. So what do we do? Well, this property can be confusing. So technically, if I follow this property, this is equal to what? 1 over t to the negative 2 power is the same as 1 over t squared, okay? So now I'm like, all right, what's that equal to, right? If this is this is following this uh, property that we talked about. Let's go ahead and discuss this further. So I'm going to kind of give you the long version of doing this, and then I'm going to kind of emphasize the easier way to think about this. So this is 1, this right here, our little uh, fraction bar is 1 divided by 1 over t squared, which is equal to 1 times, okay, remember, you got to flip this around. Okay, when you're, uh, di you're dividing fractions, you're going to turn it into a multiplication. You're going to flip this over, so that's going to be t squared. So our answer is t squared. That's our final answer. Okay, So all of this uh, turned out to be nothing but a uh, 1, over, uh, 1 over t to the negative 2 power turned out to just be equal to t squared. Okay, So remember, the way I want you to think about it is this. Whatever your, your power is, okay, whether it's negative or positive, here it's down in the denominator. If I move this guy up into the numerator, I can do that. I just have to change the sign of the exponent. So here it's 2 to the negative 2. So I'll move it up to the uh, numerator. That becomes uh, positive 2 over 1 or just t squared. Okay? And that's what we have. So that's how you want to think about this. So let's move on, take a look at some more examples. All right, so this one is interesting. I have x to negative 3 over uh, y to negative 4. If you think you can do this, okay, go ahead and do so. Just remember what I told you, okay? Don't, don't even uh, really be thinking about this property, okay? Because this is going to make you do it the long way. What we want to do is get rid of the negative exponents. So we can do that by just moving. If it has a negative exponent, we can just move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, and it will change the sign. So I'm like, okay, cool. All right, so here I have x negative 3. I'm like, yeah, I'll put you down there, and that will become positive, x cubed, no problem. And then here, you, this guy has a negative um, exponent, y to the negative 4. Let's move it upstairs, and it becomes positive 4, and you are done. Okay, totally easy. And if you're getting this, let me give you a happy face and a few check marks and a couple stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job. Okay, so you don't have to do this because that would be, you know, more confusing. However, you do need to understand the property. Okay, because, you know, we are in fact, uh, you know, a uh, applying the property to do these jobs, but we're doing this kind of in a more intelligent uh, way. So let's take a look at our last problem. So you go ahead and simplify that. Remember, uh, in algebra, typically 
you don't, your teacher is going to want to um, have your answer fully simplified. You don't want any negative exponents in your final answer. Okay, so this one, I'm like, all right, I got uh, h to the fifth, positive five. That's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do anything with that. So I could just leave that here, h to the fifth. But this g to the negative two, I don't like that. So I'm going to have to move it downstairs for that to become positive. So I'm going to be one over g squared. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Now, if I wanted to, that is the final answer. If you got that right, excellent. So there's all kinds of different ways I can write this. If I wanted to just break this problem, I can move the h to the uh, fifth power upstairs, and it would be um, h to the negative five, and then move this down here. That would be g to the uh, positive two. Okay. So again, just remember, wherever you're at in the fraction bar, wherever your power is, okay, if you move it up here, just change the sign of the exponent. And that is basically it. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you are going to get all of these problems right and get these nice A pluses 100%. You can thank me later. Okay, you thank me by watching my videos. And you can also thank me by smashing that like button. And uh, if you really, really want to thank me, please consider uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is always to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, definitely stay tuned to all the videos I will be doing. Uh, in the future because I am obsessed with teaching mathematics, but uh, my best math help will be within my math help program. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.